Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. One of the really good things about doing Grim Reapers is that you get to discover all kinds of old and modern technology that you never knew existed. And today is no exception. Today we're looking at the Soviet era VA111 Skval super fast, super cavitating torpedo. So I'm just going to unpause viewers and we'll just uh, blast through and we'll talk about the torpedo as we go. What we've got here is we're in the 1980s coming out of the Gibraltar Strait here is is a US carrier group, 1980s US carrier group, escorted by a Ticonderoga cruiser here with ASW helicopters, which of course are about to be launched and start surveying the area looking for submarines. You've got um, a cruiser here, you've got Sea Cube cruiser there, you've got an ASW uh, frigate there, an OHP, helicopters about to take off and search for submarines, and the same here. I am an ambush submarine here, I'm a Victor three class from the 1980s. What's happened is the Cold War has just gone hot and we're going to have a first strike from the Soviets. The Soviets have predicted that the US carrier group will be coming through here as pretty much they have to so they sat this guy in wait. He's currently static in the predicted path or near the predicted path of the carrier group staying at nearly 400 feet so below the thermal layer. He's going to be nay on impossible to find. Now during the Cold War the Soviets always obviously feared an attack from the US. In particular the US's large force of SSBNs or ballistic missile submarines which they had to find ways of stopping as well as their SSNs their nuclear attack submarines which would have in turn hunted and destroyed Soviet SSBNs but also the American carrier groups had to be neutralized and so well we're in the Mediterranean here and in the 1970s and 1980s there were literally almost always Soviet submarines hunting or shadowing the American carrier groups in the Med ready to fire if things went hot if they got the order. In terms of weaponry, our primary conventional weaponry is, or maybe would have been, this, the 6776. 650 mil wake homing torpedo. Um, it's enormous, it's fast, and it's long range, and it's specifically developed to destroy American carriers with its enormous warhead. Maximum speed, 50 knots. Again, that's about as fast as a torpedo can go, and it is pretty fast in the underwater world, with a massive range of 27 nautical miles, although you'd probably never actually fire it at 27. Now, the major drawback with a torpedo is they're always going to be loud. So if I fired it, I could probably fire it here. Yeah, I'm well within range, but I'll probably wait until it, until it gets a bit closer. Because it maxes out at 50 knots and it's loud, it will easily be heard by the ships, by the the sonar buoys by the helicopters and so on and therefore pretty much as soon as it's fired a I'll give my position away that's pretty much inevitable but also they'll be able to track that incoming torpedo which obviously I'm going to fire at Nimitz and they'll be able to take evasive action the Nimitz sprint speed I think is over 33 knots which means that for instance if it turned away I would only have a closing speed of about 17 or 16 knots the Nimitz might even be able to outrun my torpedoes if it's given a big head start which it will because again they'll know my torpedoes in the water and and where it's going. So what the Soviets needed, and this started development in the 1960s, saw fruition in the 1970s, fully in service I believe in the 1980s, was a super fast torpedo. Not an accurate torpedo, but a fast one. A one that could get to or near its target before the Americans could react, because ships, even a supercarrier, can only react so fast. So they developed the Skrval a really interesting weapon. If we just look at its basic statistics, we've got it modelled here with a max speed of 250 knots and that's because it was rocket propelled and super cavitated, which we'll look at in a minute. Because it trades everything for speed, it does not have much range, so we're a maximum of 7 miles and it's obviously extremely loud, so it's pretty much a suicide mission for the SSN that's going to be firing it, but it doesn't really matter because if it was firing it, it's nuclear war anyway. Because this torpedo was so fast, it could not be homing. There are later modern variants that do have some aspect of homing, but generally speaking, it had to sail on a basic INS autopilot. So it can fire at a point and get itself pretty accurately to that point, but it can't chase down uh, an opposing ship or submarine. And because of that, it would have generally a nuclear warhead, at least in the Cold War variant. So it would be fired 
at a target within seven miles, it would autopilot to its predicted intercept point and then it would detonate its nuclear warhead somewhere near the target and the target would have no way of reacting in time and escaping because 250 knots is just so fast for naval warfare. So let's run it through. Um, you can see all of the assets are airborne. We've got the AWACS scanning for surface and air targets. You've got sea sprites here. They're going to be heading out on kind of preset courses to start laying buoys or buoys to try and detect me. Uh, we might have some SH3s in there somewhere, I'm not sure. So we can speed that forward. That guy's getting a little bit closer. Has he seen me? No, he's not because we're below the thermal layer. Uh, we're not emitting any sound at all at the moment. Distance to carrier, 13 miles. Remember, we're not making any sound at all. The carrier is making an enormous amount of sound. So even below the layer, we can roughly pinpoint the positions of the ships and probably even have a good guess of what those ships are. Always being laid now, as you can see. Still not being spotted. Just waiting for the carrier to get within our predicted seven miles or so range. And that's it. All right, I'm not sure if we could generate a real track solution or an accurate solution here, so we're gonna to have to go up above the layer. In this case, let that happen. As soon as we do, we are extremely vulnerable, obviously, but that's okay. If we're in a situation, we're probably not expected to survive anyway. Up we go. 300 feet. Okay, we're above the thermal layer now. We've now got a solution on the target. We're going to fire our Shkval, so we're going to get it here. We can't fire at the ship, because remember, it does not have a seeker. So we're going to predict it's going to be about traveling along there, about there, and let's fire the torpedo. It fires pneumatically um, like a 50 knot torpedo, and then we'll speed up with eight rocket boosters, and let's talk about the weapon here. Incredibly interesting piece of engineering. I believe the Americans have been trying to get these into service but failed so far. Obviously completely bespokely made to be a fast running torpedo. I'm going to tell you what I know about it so far and that its main power is a gas generator and eight rocket motors around the aft that you can see here. But it needs more than just power. You can have all the power in the world, you still can't push an uncompressible liquid out the way. So you have a gas director here which feeds hot gas from the motors outwards to amazingly vaporize the incoming water as it hits the nose to create gas bubbles or vapored water around the missile, that super cavitation. What that means is at no point is any of this torpedo actually touching any water because the water is being vaporized turned into steam before it actually reaches the torpedo so it rides in a bubble of steam which is compressible and therefore it's almost like the torpedo is now traveling through air in terms of steering the nozzle can self-direct to help keep the weapon stable as well as that you have some control fins at the back here they don't steer like normal control surfaces instead my understanding is they pop in and out to create drag in the gas field as necessary to pull the weapon left right up or down obviously because it's traveling in an extremely noisy gas field it can't have any passive or active homing sensors so it can only guide to its INS or pre-calculated position but with a nuclear warhead that's going to be enough also it's emitting vast amounts of sound so all of these ships I mean like a normal torpedo to be honest normal torpedo could be detected by all these ships now um, and the carrier alerted and that's happening now but because it's so fast this is one to one scale by the way because it's so fast, there is nothing limits. Even if she started flank speed and turning away now, it's all irrelevant. There's, there's nothing you can do at these speeds. If this was a 50 knot torpedo, as we said, she could take evasive action and very possibly evade it. Oh, speaking of which, uh, I really need to try and survive, don't I? Um, maybe a bit late now, but we'll try. So we're going to go very deep, put some noisemakers out, turn away, do everything we can to uh, confuse the hostile. Either way, they certainly know there's torpedoes here. Even if the torpedo doesn't hit, which it almost certainly won't, what does it matter? A nuclear warhead's gonna have an effective range. A small nuclear warhead will have an effective range against a carrier of what? I don't know, a mile, question mark? Okay, here they come. Torpedoes are coming against me. I'll probably die because I left it way too late to react because I'm silly. I'm busy yapping away, but we'll see. 
Oh, we're going to miss it. Uh, and, but again, it doesn't really matter. There are no nuclear warheads in game, by the way, but you're going to have to use your imagination, obviously. That's a shame we didn't hit it. Never mind, maybe it's for the best viewers. Don't want to upset the viewers. Boom! I'm going to pause there. Boom! Just reach its INS point, and that's it. It self detonates, and yeah. I mean, that's how accurate I got it, right? From doing this fairly and squarely. So that's obviously oh, maybe not a vaporized carrier, but it's, it's a dead carrier and probably a sunk carrier in my opinion, let me know your thoughts. That's that, uh, purely out of interest. Uh, let's just see if we can escape. We've almost only left it too late. You never know. Uh, was that Mark 46 on the way? Oh, I just, I just beat it, look at that. It hasn't had time to correct. Come on, Super Gap, let's try and beat this guy. More noise in the air, I mean the water. Yeah, really, as I said, really fun learning about this stuff, and I don't claim to be an expert on any of it, but, you know, just basic wiki reading is just so interesting. Oh, no, he got me, you son of a bee. Turn into it, turn into it. Yeah, Zubicat. Got to get down. I wonder what our crush depth is. I should have researched it, I don't know. Right, there's a bunch of other torpedoes coming, but they're slow movers. These Azeroks are so hard to fight against. Right, I am going to make another turn that way. I have read about torpedo evasion, uh, the British SSNs, but um, like everything else, I've forgotten. No, I've made an error that I should have turned into it now, shouldn't I? I think I've left it too late. It's going to get me. More noise. Keep turning. I think it's got me. It's got me. Oh, blast! I forgot to turn off the anti-cavitation. Silly cat. Must be being a noob. It's got a track on me now. And I've evaded again. See you later, sucker. Superior turning. More noisemakers. Meow. Underwater warfare, so freaking cool, viewers. So cool. We're in a good few books now. Right, turn into it. Yes. See you later. More noise. Gonna go lower. Can't go any lower. Turning, these guys are coming in now. Well, we've changed from a Skaval video, viewers, to um, whatever the hell this is. No more noise yet. Oh, I completely forgot I got these. Right, friggin' send it. Uh, go that way. That's a, um, it's a moss, isn't it? Uh, a um, countermeasure torpedo. See you later. Can I find another one? Uh, moss out there. I'm everywhere except here. More noise. Right, I think I'm in a straight run now. I'm just going to run it. 32 knots. Go, Victor 3. Moss is all out. More noise. More noise. I've definitely beaten that guy. And I reckon I'm outrunning these guys. So I've managed to kill a carrier and damage a whole and irradiate a whole carrier group. And look, nothing reached me. And I'll be damned if anyone's going to catch me now. Well, um, that was exciting, viewers. So all I wanted to show was the Skaval and the basics I've learned about it. How the basic hydrodynamics work. How they've had to use a gas generator. How they've had to use rocket motors to accelerate it. And why it's so useful and dangerous to the West. And by the way, until the Berlin Wall fell, fell um, the West didn't actually know this missile existed for 15 years or whatever. So kind of crazy, right? And its use, in my opinion, which is as a fast reaction weapon with a nuclear warhead, which would be essentially unavoidable. In this case, to a carrier group, more likely it was developed, um, in my opinion, against SSBNs, against SSNs, but uh, that wouldn't have made such a fun uh, video. Uh, as we said, the warhead, uh, as far as I'm aware, isn't modelled, or isn't modelled as it you know, would have been well, a giant kiloton you know explosion obviously which would have wiped out the carrier but we saw getting it very close to the carrier and even if the carrier had evaded 
you know, it's a couple of minutes before it gets here. There's only so far it wouldn't have got out of the blast uh, uh, radius. So really interesting. Please let me know your thoughts because as ever, you guys read much more books and stuff on this uh, than me and I would love to learn from you as ever. I hope you enjoyed that and bye-bye.